Okay, so we have this idea of a first derivative being equal to zero down, right? That's when f prime when f prime of x is equal to zero, we call that a critical point. But what about if I change this to f double prime of x being equal to zero? What does that mean? Is that a, is that a supercritical point? What does it mean? It's actually what we're going to have here is an inflection point. So that's the first thing we want to look for when we're talking about inflection points. And we'll talk about how to find this later. But this is really the definition. F double prime of x is equal to zero. But we're going to add one more thing here. Rather, rather than just being f double prime of x being equal to zero, we want f double prime of x to change sign. And this won't come up very often, but I will show an example where it does come up in these videos. But for now, let's just figure out how we can find the inflection points of f of x, this graph of f of x here. And so remember, just like from what we said above, we're looking for f double prime of x equal to zero and f double prime of x changing sign. And what we'll focus on here, which will, will actually help us identify everything, is f double prime of x changing sign. So basically what I'm saying down here, this is the definition up here, but the way we're going to do, do this, find this definition on the graph is by looking for a strong concave up and looking for a strong concave down and just kind of realizing that some, somewhere in between these two spots it's going to need to change. Right? So what I mean by that is let's highlight in red all the concave up things. So remember what concave up looks like. So the things that are really strongly concave up, we'd have a really strongly concave up there. Not really anywhere. Oh, looks like it's pretty strong concave up there. And then I would also say that it's pretty strongly concave up over here. Okay, let's see, did I miss any? I don't think so. Let's come back and do the concave downs and then we can kind of assess. So the concave downs I'll highlight in orange. So the concave downs, we'll have one here. We'll have one here. And we'll have one here. And so all I'm using right now to decide whether it's concave up is just this idea of if you poured water on the graph, would it pool up or would it kind of pour off, right? And so in the concave up, areas it would pool up right here right but in the concave down areas it would kind of trickle off and so in between each of these concave up and concave down areas we're going to have an inflection point a point where it's zero right so I'll highlight these in green for now but somewhere in between this concave down and this concave up it needs to be zero and I'm going to say it's at C Okay. Somewhere between this concave up and this concave down, it needs to be zero. I'm going to say it happens at E. Somewhere between this concave down and this concave up, it needs to be zero. We'll say that's at F. And then finally, finally the last two goes from up to down. It needs to happen somewhere. Let's say it happens at I. And then it needs to go from down to up. It needs to happen somewhere. Let's say it's at J. All right. So the inflection points here, the original question, the inflection points would be C, E, F, I, L. And don't try to rush through these. It's actually pretty difficult. Um, take your time, do this highlighting of the graph, and just pick out the points where you think it changes. Now one thing if you're getting really tripped up, this is only if you're getting really tripped up. I, I imagine this, uh, this part one will be good enough for most of you but if you're just like well what is I can't find this concave up concave down thing another thing you can try is draw some tangent lines okay so let's draw some tangent lines we'll draw it in pink here and what we're gonna look for is spots where the tangent line is above the graph on one side of where it touches the graph and below the graph on the other side so what do I mean by that so let's draw this tangent line here now look at that the graph is below on each side of the tangent line where it touches right and that's actually kind of another way we can characterize the graph being concave down at this point down here let's say I draw a tangent line right here at this point down here the graph is above the tangent line on each side of the point where it touches 
right? And that's a way we can characterize the graph being concave up. Now, what happens if I try to die, try to try, sorry, try to draw a tangent line at any of these green points? So let's see what happens. So I'll try to draw a tangent line at I. So we have there, and then we have there. And so notice that the graph is above the tangent line on this side of it. It's below the tangent line on the other. And so that means it's changing concavity. All right? And so that's, that's a way we could say that I is an inflection point. But again, I would just stick with this one, just identify the real strong areas of concavity. I'm actually going to erase these lines from the graph because I don't think they're going to help all of you that much. Um, but it's just another way you can think about it.